Last week, Dr. Ben Song began his journey through time in the revived series of Quantum Leap. This week, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. But before we get into it, I do want to warn you there will be spoilers. So if that's not your thing, duck out and come back after you've seen the episode. If you don't care, on with the show. So episode two is entitled Atlantis, and that's a very apt title because that's where we begin the show. No, not in the lost city of Atlantis or even Stargate Atlantis. We're in the space shuttle Atlantis during a mission in 1998. Ben has leapt into David Tamora, an astronaut who is very important to both us, the audience, and Ben himself. Why is this important to the audience? Well, David Tamora, as well as the space shuttle Atlantis in 1998, did not have a mission. So there was no space mission in the entire year for this shuttle, and David Tamora is not an actual astronaut in our real world. Now, this could have several implications. I will come back to it later because I think it might actually fit in with a theory I've got running, but I do want to touch on more of the episode first. So we discover through Addison that David is actually meant to die on this mission, and she concludes that that must be the reason Ben has leapt into him, so that he can put that right and save his life. Uh, he ends up changing history a couple of different times throughout the episode, but ultimately it leads to a worse disaster because instead of just David dying, he has now doomed the entire shuttle. And this is interesting because it's a very, very similar situation to what happened several years later with the Columbia. But as this is 1998, none of the characters have that knowledge, so they don't necessarily have the information to do what would be right for them because they don't think anything's going to go wrong. And that will come back into play later. So anyways, Ben comes up with this crazy solution where they're going to dock with Mir in order to replenish their oxygen. And that will allow them time to, to repair the heat shields and re-enter Earth. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a negative and a positive here. I very much enjoyed the interior shots of the space shuttle where they're floating inside the ship. All that looked great. The exterior stuff, to me at least, did not look at all realistic. The space effects looked a little off to me. It actually looked like they were sitting on a set in front of a black screen or in front of a blanket with stars on it or a green screen projecting space. I don't know. I know that's very nitpicky, but I feel like they were trying to blow everything out of the water with the effects and the budget for this, and it just didn't really hit home to me. But again, that's a nitpick. I've, I like some hokey sci-fi. They don't always have the best effects. I'm not going to really ding them too hard here. That's the main story from the leaped perspective. Back in the present day, the rest of the side characters, including Addison when she's not in her hologram form, continue to work on tracking down the, uh, the situation with Janice, Al's daughter, to try and figure out what's going on with the conspiracy. Why did Ben go behind their backs and leap? What that whole situation is about. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in my previous video, a lot of the side characters are blah to me at this point. We haven't really got much to do with them, and unfortunately, that continues in this episode. I'm hoping they develop and they become loved members of the family. I don't want to sit there and kind of dread their scenes and hope to get back to the leap. We're two episodes in, so I can't really judge it that harshly yet. So that leads me to another fairly large potential issue the show may have if it keeps going down this road. And in order to understand that, we have to go back to the original Quantum Leap. So in the original series, Sam's story was basically always the focus, with a couple exceptions. He was always the primary focus on whoever he leapt into, the storyline rectifying whatever happened, with Al popping in whenever he needed to. And the fact that they're bouncing half and half here with the current time frame and the leap time frame, it just doesn't allow for the immersion and the depth of character and the depth of story that we got when we were primarily focused for the entire 48 minutes back then, because commercial breaks weren't as long, on the Sam storyline. Now that we're doing 22 and 22, we're not getting the depth of story, and it kind of just feels like we're hitting the beats, we're in and we're out, and that's it. That could change. I mean, obviously, we need to focus on both storylines, so maybe going forward, we're going to get a lot more time in the past. That remains to be seen. But as of right now, I could see that being a potential issue if the show can't strike that balance a little better than it is right now. So that aside, I am very much enjoying the fact that they're kind of resolving and moving the storyline on this Janus thing forward. They're not just mystery boxing at the end of the season. They're making forward momentum. They're making progress. As much as the characters aren't really growing on me yet, they are very active in getting a resolution in the mystery. And one of the things that I very, very much like 
and this is something they really didn't have any need to do, but they brought back Beth, played by the same actress who played Beth in the original Quantum Leap. That would be Al's wife. Now, we're not going to see Al in this show outside of stock footage because, sadly, Dean died about a year ago, but bringing back his wife, and in this episode, she was in an incredibly minor role. Like, she didn't even have much to do. She had a couple of lines. That shows, at least to me, that they're taking the original source material seriously, and they're paying tribute to it and letting it grow naturally into the stories they're trying to tell in this show. And that is something that they had no need to do. They could have just swept all that under the rug and started new but at least they're paying homage to and tributing what came before. And for all I know, she'll become a main recurring character. But even if she doesn't, that was a hell of a way to involve the original series. So I do need to give them kudos for that. Now, I did promise that I would get back to my theory. If you haven't seen my last video, basically I put forth the idea that Sam is ultimately the puppet master of everything that's going on. He's traveling throughout time trying to move pieces on a chessboard, probably in my estimation, in order to move all of these pieces into place in order to get him back into the present time to rescue himself, and obviously by doing so, save the world, because I don't think Sam is ultimately going to try to rescue himself if it's going to harm anyone else in a negative way. That is what I think is ultimately happening, and I think that's going to be the resolution that the series leads to. But in the meantime, here are the tidbits that I picked up in this episode that I think actually lend credence to this theory. So as I mentioned earlier in the episode, Ben leapt into David Tamora, a not-real-life astronaut who doesn't exist in our timeline. He was on a mission with the space shuttle Atlantis in 1998, also that does not exist in the timeline that we are in. Now remember, Ben is also suffering severe memory loss. He's got that Swiss cheese brain. In fact, he loves David, but he didn't realize this until Addison mentioned to him who David was. Then it all came flooding back to him that actually, David is the real reason he immigrated to the United States, became a scientist, and ultimately joined the Quantum Leap program. Had David not immigrated to the United States himself, became a scientist, and joined the astronaut program, Ben never would have been on the life path that he is currently on, which means he never would have joined Quantum Leap. He would never be leaping. And ultimately, I think that is what Sam was trying to set up. He was trying to move Ben into this place by leaping back in time and moving David into place, thus creating an alternate timeline where David joined NASA, went on this Atlantis mission. There's all sorts of these effects from one instance way back in time that Sam knew how to move on the chessboard of time somehow. I mean, time may not even move the same for him. Maybe he's been doing this for hundreds of years. I don't know if he ages in there. So he has a higher concept of the time stream than I think any of our characters even understand right now. Add to that the fact that uh, Ernie Hudson is playing Magic, a character who previously Sam leapt into in the original series, and that lends even more credence to the fact that he's manipulating people. Add to that Janice, Al's daughter, who is clearly influenced by Sam. Her entire life she basically owes to Sam. Adding these characters together, they are all placed, like how are they all in this Quantum Leap program unless there's somebody pulling the strings behind the scenes? And it's very interesting, manipulate, pulling the strings. All of these things sound like negatives, but I don't think any of this is being done in a negative way. Now, this episode also introduces another wrinkle that, combined with the last episode, is very, very interesting to me. So there are two leaps so far. We've had two episodes, two leaps, both of which involve classified information that is part of a government cover-up. Now, I suppose this could just be something that the show wants us to look at, like, oh, well, clearly this is information that the characters have, but the general public wouldn't have. I suppose that's the case, but it also seems suspicious in and of itself. Are these leaps especially targeting events that the government has covered up because the government already had foreknowledge that these events were related to leaps? That would be kind of an interesting thing to find out, that the government had foreknowledge of these events, obviously because they were leapt into at earlier periods of time, and they had to cover up that information because the Quantum Leap program at that earlier point in time didn't yet exist getting very timey-wimey here. Now, something else I would like to bring up here is the fact that the Atlantis space shuttle incident was basically the same thing that happened to Columbia several years later. So this took place in 1998. Based on Ben's changes, the Columbia disaster in 2003 may not happen because 
He effectively brought this awareness to them in 1998. They successfully resolved it. All the astronauts lived. The astronauts, as well as NASA, now has the information to potentially save Columbia from the same disaster, thus making that never happen. And if that's the case, that would drastically change not only space travel for the United States, but the future of space travel going forward, because that incident effectively ended the United States' use of space shuttles overall. That drastically changed the entire trajectory of space travel from 2003 forward. If that didn't happen, who's to say what impact that would have going forward? Now, this could also mean where it's now 1998 instead of 2003. That is several years of scientific progress on a new shielding system or something. Perhaps the Quantum Leap program needed these advanced shields to be developed earlier or at all for their program. Is this another change that was made on purpose so that the Quantum Leap program would have this altered technology in order to help bring Sam home or do whatever sort of change Sam is trying to manipulate behind the scenes? That's also a possibility. I'm just throwing things out there because we have two episodes and I'm just wildly speculating. Ben has a Swiss cheese brain. He wouldn't know Columbia existed at all, except for the fact that Addison told him about it during the leap. I don't think she mentioned it by name, but it would be very interesting to me if several episodes down the line, Ben brings this up, brings up the 2003 space shuttle disaster Blank faces from everyone. No one has any idea what he's talking about because remember, their timeline would have now been changed to not include Columbia. So the only one who would have knowledge of it, at least from our main cast, would be Ben. Ben remembers things from a timeline that no longer exists. I think that would be a fun callback in a later episode. So keep your eye out for that. And while I'm on the topic of uh, mysteries and things that need to be solved and unknown information, what's going on with the waiting room? It's two episodes now, and I don't believe they've even mentioned or referenced the waiting room. What does that mean? Does it still exist? When Ben is leaping into these people, are they concurrently leaping into the future like they used to? Or has Quantum Leap technology progressed to a point where his, where Ben's consciousness is actually suppressing the consciousness of the body and they're both sharing it until Ben leaps out? And if that's the case, are these people potentially catching glimpses of what Ben's doing inside their body? Could that potentially be these possession stories throughout history? I'm wildly throwing that out there. Somebody told me in one of the trailers they do mention the waiting room, but that leads to more questions about what's happening with the last two people Ben leapt into. Are they there and we just haven't talked to them yet? Are they unaware that somebody is currently in Ben's body? Has another government agency taken Ben's body away and they're the ones interacting with them? I don't know. I would like for that to be answered. I hope they don't just completely ignore the waiting room. So all this to say, there are lots of intriguing things, lots of fun mysteries to solve. But at the same time, that's what's fascinating. me: The unknowns, the mysteries, not so much the episode itself, not so much a lot of the characters. I do think that if this is going to succeed, it can't just live or die on the fun mysteries and the fun time travel and all that stuff. We need to get meatier stories, juicier stories for the side characters. We need to grow to love them in the same way we did Sam and Al in the original series. That's the only way this is going to survive for the long haul. So I do hope we get a lot more with them. So I'm definitely looking forward to what the season has to offer. I do feel that for a second episode, it was kind of a bit lacking, but what do you think? Let me know below all your thoughts about Quantum Leap right now. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do all the YouTube things like share, subscribe, dislike twice, all the fun stuff. So until next time, I hope your next leap is a leap home.